Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator. And in this episode, we are going to be going over SPAD next. And I'm going to be telling you guys and showing you guys, more importantly, why I still prefer SPAD next over the in-game controls. I'm going to show you the benefits of using it. We're going to talk about how to set it up from a very beginner standpoint, as well as talk about uh, some of the more advanced features and some of the third-party tools that are available to be used with it. So stick around. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right, Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is gonna be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023. Uh, again, in Houston, Texas, at the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas, and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight simming experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's gonna be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. Okay guys, so as you have probably heard and heard me mention a thousand times throughout my videos, I use SPAD next for all of my controls in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I think with the only exception that would be the rudder pedals and that's because they never change. Um, but for everything else, I use SPAD next. And the reason being is that I personally find the in-game control menu here, oh, wrong one, helps me if you click the right one. The in-game controls window to be clunky. I find it to be um, very unintuitive. Um, I don't like the lag, there's a lot of delay. I don't like the way the profiles, I mean, I just really don't like anything about it. It just, and not to mention it is extremely limited in the controls that you are actually able to bind where SPAD Next has a far larger uh, reach into the simulator as far as what controls, switches and buttons that you actually wanna bind to your controllers. Um, and it's just overall a better scenario in my opinion. So what I'm going to do today, guys, is I'm going to talk about why I still use SPAD. Uh, I'm going to show you guys the benefits of doing so. Come on, SPAD, where are you? Okay. So I'm going to show you guys, as I was about to say, how to set it up from a very beginner standpoint. You've just purchased it. Um, and we will, at the end of the video, I will give you guys my recommendations on which ones to purchase or which version to purchase based on what your needs are. Now, there are a couple different things that I'm also gonna show you guys at the end of the video. Uh, we'll talk about the Class Echo and the Class Echo Mobile. Um, those are, it's an extremely powerful device that allows you to do a ton um, and it does require the use of SPAD Next. However, it is, like I said, it's extremely robust. Um, but we're gonna start from a very basic standpoint here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my profiles page and I am actually going to cry a little bit and then I'm gonna delete these. I'm really not uh, gonna cry. Uh, this isn't very huge of a deal. Now you can't ever delete the last one. So we're gonna create a new empty profile. So I'm just gonna create that. Let me get my keyboard up here. And we're just gonna call this MSFS, just like that. Press enter, okay. And then now I can delete my TBM profile. And we're gonna recreate all that. I'm gonna show you guys all that later. So here we have a basic profile. This is always gonna be step one is creating a basic profile. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my uh, flight simulator here. We're gonna come down home to Tucson. And let's just start with a very simple aircraft, something that's gonna be very common, obviously. And we're just gonna start out with the 172. I'll load up, it doesn't matter which variant, just gonna load up a 172. Actually, let's come back, let's load up something that has 
uh, mixture, now that I'm thinking about it, or not mixture, pitch. So let's go to a complex. Uh, I don't think I have the 182 installed, but that would, oh, I guess I do. That thing's probably so outdated, but what the heck, we'll use it for today. So loading up the Carinado 182 here, and then we'll get started with setting up our controls. Now what I do with while we're waiting for the sim to load with this first profile is I'm gonna create everything that I would use for any aircraft. Now, by the way, guys, this is, this uh, demonstration is going to be using the Verpal uh, CM3 Throttle Quadrant, the Verpal Mongoose 2 Grip, and then as well as the Wind Wing Combat Panels, and again, as I said earlier, the Class Echo, uh, the physical device. We will not be using the mobile version today, um, but if you guys are interested, I do have a video on that. Just search my videos, uh, hit the search button, type uh, Class Echo Mobile, and you will see it. Now, good old Microsoft Flight Simulator. I don't know why it's doing this recently. But every time I load up on the first time, it loads me up on the runaway, even though I selected a parking spot. It has been doing that recently and I don't know why. So let me set this back. And uh, while that's happening, oh, there we go. That was quick. It does this every time lately now. First time, first load. Actually, it's, I actually found it's about one in three loads is what it's doing. Anyway, so from this profile, I'm gonna use this profile to build everything else around it. That way all I have to do is adjust it. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna come over here and go to my controls. We're gonna start with the controls and here's everything that's currently plugged in. I'm not actually sure what this device is to be completely honest with you guys. Um, here, let's go ahead and hit fly. There we go, we're in the cockpit. All right, let's come back here. Okay, so as I said, we're gonna be using the CM3 throttle, the CM3 base with the Mongoose 2 grip. Here is my combat panels, or combat and takeoff panel from Win Wing. These are primarily used for DCS, but I really like using a couple of the features uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator, such for example, the takeoff panel has a very large landing gear handle, and it's a three position handle, much like you'd see in the 737 or the Boeing series aircraft um, that contain that three position switch. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm gonna start with the basics. First, I'm gonna select the device that I wanna start programming. And you can see all of your axis, show up accordingly. Here's the mouse that's on the front of the throttle. Okay, and then we have a slider here as well. And then all of your buttons will also display as well. Okay, so if you want to map a button, you simply push the button, figure out which one lights up, which we'll talk about here in a minute. All right, so let's start with the axis. That's gonna be our, our primary thing. Now, because I am only using my, my Verbal throttle and stick, we're gonna map everything as if it was controlling four engines, multiple engines, doesn't matter. So first, the reason why I wanted to pick this aircraft is we wanted an aircraft that has the complex configuration. So first we're gonna start with the pitch, which is gonna be this one here. So I'm gonna highlight it, add event, a standard axis, and we're just gonna find propeller pitch. And again, because I'm going to likely use this with multi-engine aircraft. I'm gonna select all four engines that are possible. We're gonna set the pitch all the way to full or low pitch, hit set, go to high pitch, hit set again, and now we have the axis set accordingly. Now the reason why this doesn't have a zero is because I have a detent. In that detent, I'm gonna show you guys how I use that for reverse prop on the next one. So that's all I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna hit okay. Okay, and that is now saved. Now let's rinse and repeat with the throttle. Select the throttle, add event, a standard access. Now in this case, I want the throttle with reverser. Okay, not the X1, just with reverse is all I'm doing. I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. Again, engines one, two, three, and four. Oops, hey, turn on, there we go. Full thrust, go ahead and hit set. I'm gonna go to idle thrust, which is against the detent. Okay, so I'm not, the handle can still move back a little bit further. I'm gonna hit set, you can see there's at 67. Now I'm gonna lift that throttle over the gate on the rear detent, hit set again. And now when the throttle axis is fully at zero, my thrust reverses will engage. Now they will engage at full thrust, but makes it very easy for me. And you guys can probably hear them click back into place there. So now I'm just gonna hit okay. And now I have my um, throttle set. And you don't have to hit save on every single one. And then I've got one little slider to the right of the throttles. and I'm gonna use that for my mixture. 
I used to use the slider that's actually on the throttle grips themselves, but I found that I bumped it with my fingers too frequently. So I'm gonna select, oops, that one again, add event, standard axis, just like we did before, mixture, engines one, two, three, and four. I actually did that a little bit opposite, but max mixture and minimum. And now you guys can see inside the cockpit, everything is working as it should. And it works far smoother, I promise you. It works absolutely just smooth as can be. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're gonna talk about one that is a bit more tricky and that is the trim. All right, for that, I'm gonna switch over to the flight stick. And here is my hat switch. I'm gonna click on the hat switch. Okay, this is the one that I'm currently using. I've actually got quite a few hat switches on here. But we're gonna use add event and you can see it's broken down into the compass directionals. Now I have an eight position hat switch. So you have the north, northeast, east, etc. We're obviously gonna be dealing with just the primaries, north, east, south, and west. North for down, south for up. Okay, so <clears throat> meaning up on the yoke is the way I think about this. The direction that I would be pulling my stick back is the where I want my trims to be in respect of. So we're gonna go north pressed, okay? Oh, disregard that. For this, I'm actually gonna go north held and I'm gonna show you guys another trick to this. Now we're gonna come here. We don't have any condition. A condition is only do this if whatever this is happens. We're not worried about that. We're keeping this very basic taste. We're just gonna do add action. When I push the button and hold it down, this is what I want you to do. Send a simulation event. We want to tell the simulator to do something. So just think of it in that respect. Now there's a bunch of advanced buttons here and some that are designated specifically for Microsoft Flight Simulator, some for the specific aircraft. I tend to find that for most things that I deal with, again, especially on a beginner level, you just wanna use SimConnect. It's the easiest way to go. And I very seldom have issues with it. I'm gonna go trim and we are looking for elevator trim and it's gonna be elevator trim down, okay? Now, let's talk about these last two items here. What the threshold means is that we need to hold the button down for half a second. This is broken down into milliseconds. So this is 500 milliseconds, which equals half a second, okay? So what we want to do is what this means is I have to hold that button down for half a second before the action will take place. Well, when you're thinking about trim, we don't want half a second, all right? So I'm actually just gonna change that down to one, all right? One millisecond, which basically you tap the button, it's gonna move. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna hit save. And now guys, just keep an eye on the trim wheel over here for our nose down pitch. So if I just quickly tap it, it moves. And if I hold it, it goes like crazy the other direction. Now, let's go ahead and talk about one more thing. This is the frequency. How far do you want it to move? So we could take this down, for example, if we take it down to one as well. Go super fast. If we move it higher, for example, 100. Doesn't move quite as fast. Okay, so if you find that it's too responsive, you can come in here and increase this number. If you find that it's not responsive enough for you, you reduce the number. Lower the number, faster the action, okay? So, <clears throat> got that squared away. Let's go ahead and continue on with the others. So we're gonna go ahead and hit save here. I'm gonna go back to add event. Now we're gonna work on south. Again, held, add action. And it always typically remembers where you were last unless you close the app down. Elevator trim up, hit okay. Okay again, change that to a one. We obviously want the same variance that we had before. Change that to 100. Hit okay, hit save. And now when we go the other direction, we can see it rolling back. Okay, so it really depends on how you want to do it. <sighs> really, we're doing this today, Microsoft? All right, cool, good to know. <laughs> so let's go ahead and continue on with the rest. So obviously, east held is gonna be right wing down or right aileron. So that's elevator trim, let's scroll up. And actually, when it does that, it's easier just to search by trim again. 
<laughs> rudder trim. We want aileron trim. There we go. Aileron trim right. So there we go. Select that. Hit OK. Rinse and repeat over here. One. Oops. 100. Add event. West. You guys know what that's going to be. Left aileron. Send simulation event again. Aileron trim left. And rinse and repeat. And I will tell you guys, the default 25 is rather intense on the trim wheel. Uh, it's You're going to get a lot of response. So I do recommend increasing that number a bit. All right. And then the last thing that I'm going to do, I don't normally do, but I actually think I'm going to add that today, is we're going to find something for our rudder trim. I think I'm going to use this one here. Don't use rudder trim very often, but every now and then. So again, just like we did before. We're going to do button held, add action, send simulation event, and let's go find that rudder trim. And there's rudder trim left, which is what I'm working on. And just like we did before. I don't, again, I don't use it very often, but for example, like on the tail draggers, it definitely makes a difference. So again, having that mapped. Makes it easy. And this is so much faster, believe it or not, than dealing with Microsoft Flight Simulator because it makes it easier to customize it based on the aircraft. This even has rotor uh, inputs in here. Like for example, there's one right there, okay? And your rotor trim reset. And I'm gonna show you the, the advantage of that and we're gonna talk about uh, helicopters here towards the end of the video. So again, rotor trim right, let's just add that in. Okay, and we've got our trim. I wanted to show you guys all of the trim process because again, it's it's kind of convoluted. If you miss one of those steps, you're gonna find yourself going crazy wondering what the heck is wrong. Okay, so, but yeah, that's a good trim wheel right there. That's, that's a nice speed, I like that. That'll work for me. It's very responsive, good. Okay, so next, let's talk about some of the more simpler things. Now I'm gonna move over to my takeoff panel as I was showing you guys before. Here's my landing gear, cycling through one through three. So here's landing gear down. So let's just go ahead and add that. And this is gonna be button pressed. No, no fancy tricks, add action, send simulation event, and we're just gonna type gear. And again, it takes it to, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Sim connect, gear down, simple and easy, boom. And that's all there is to that one. Going back to one, add event. Make sure you click on the button. See how it's got the red line here. Make sure that you guys are clicking on the button. Button pressed, out of action, send simulation event. Okay, and there should be a gear up right down here. There it is. Done. Last thing that I wanna uh, map immediately are my flaps. And believe it or not, I actually have two buttons on my flaps that I like to map, and it's these two here. So what I'm gonna do here is there's a couple of different things that read out for flaps. Add action, again, selected the button. Now I'm just gonna, just like I said before, search for flaps. And there we go. Now you notice that you have flaps up, flaps down, flaps decrease and increase. Flaps up are gonna bring them all the way up. Flaps down are gonna put them all the way down. So what I recommend is using increase and decrease. So I'm doing decrease right now because it's for my flaps up switch. Okay, and again, just add action, that's it. And then now we're gonna find that second button, 16. Click on it, button pressed, just like we did before. And then this one's obviously gonna be the inverse, increase. And remember, this is my base profile. So this is anything that I want to have added to this now that we wanna make sure that we can copy over later. So let's see here, let me think about this for a second, maybe something else that I wanna add. Let's see here, do, 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 do. Let's do parking brake. Parking brake's one of the ones that I always lose. So let's come over here. And actually, let's just start with the battery. Let's just, we've got a couple switches here that we can start with our battery. So I'm gonna go back to the throttle. That's where all my stuff is. So I'm gonna do this one. 
And actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna use a different one. I have a little red switch here, two position switch. I'm sure you got something cool here. So notice that right now, now I can change this in the Verpal configuration software, but I'm gonna show you guys, like for example, the Thrustmaster Warthog. On the Thrustmaster Warthog, there are certain switches, the toggle switches, you can flip them up and it does exactly what this one does. Registers the up position, but notice when I turn it off, it doesn't highlight another button like the landing gear did that you guys saw earlier. So what we're gonna do is we can still use this. So we're gonna tell it when I flip the button up, we want it to go button pressed, add action, send simulation event. And on this one, we're gonna look for battery. And we're gonna do master battery on. Okay, now check this out. We're gonna keep the same button, right? We're gonna go add event, button released. What happens when I let go of this button? Button released. Remember, this is a two position switch. Add action, send simulation event, master battery off. Okay, so now it knows. When I when this button lights up, go to master battery on. When this button light turns off, go to master battery off. So I'm gonna hit save. We're gonna go down here, watch the cockpit. There you go. Perfect, and notice it also brings the standby battery on. Now we could map the standby battery independently. We could also ma uh, map the master battery independently. A couple of different ways to do it. So it really depends on how many controls you got and what you wanna do. I'm just trying to show you guys as many features of the software as I can and then let you get creative with it. I didn't mean to hide it there, there we go. Okay, so obviously next we're gonna need the alternator, right? So let's do the same thing, there's 37. Add event, button press, let's find our alternator. And let's see here. So you're gonna have a couple different options here. So first off, you have alternators one, two, three, and four. Obviously that's gonna be based on your number of engines, but, or you can use alternator on and off. This will gonna bring any alternator switches that you have are gonna be mapped here. And that's what we're gonna use here. So again, alternator on, that's with the button pressed. And then I'm gonna add event, button released. And it makes it really nice that it remembers the last position you were because you just come in here and select the inverse. There's off, do a quick save. Let's flip that battery on again. And there's our alternators. Okay, and obviously next, let's do our avionics. Since we're here, keep things nice and easy. Add action, send simulation. Avionics, now this one might be a little, oh no, it's right there, there we go. So you have master one, master two, let's see, master set, toggle avionics master, autopilot, let's see here, which one do we wanna use? This could be a little more interesting. There's G36 Pacific. And it looks like we're gonna be toggling the avionics master. So it doesn't have a master avionics on and off. You can do one or two on or off. So if you have two independent switches, obviously then you could do that. And technically I could uh, actually use that. So we can do that. I mean, it's only got one and two. So yeah, let's go ahead. Let's set this for avionics master one. I've got two switches here that we're gonna use for this. Okay. And you can see it turned on. And now we're gonna do the same thing, add button released, just like we did before, add action, send simulation event, master one off. And then we'll get that second one mapped as a repeat. 35, add event. Nope, didn't want short, I want button pressed. Add action, send simulation. And I know you guys are probably getting tired of hearing it, I just, I wanna make sure I'm, I'm walking you guys through everything and I don't get too ahead of myself. So part of this is just to help me make sure that I'm teaching you guys correctly. Because SPAD can be confusing. It can be. <clears throat> There's still a ton that I, even I don't know about it and I've been using it for a very long time. But like I've said before, I use it in a much more simpler version than I think than, than well, definitely than what it's capable of. All right. And there we go. So now, Let's walk through this. So I've just sat in my plane. There's ba battery on, alternators on, avionics one and two. Maybe now we wanna talk about some lights. Let's get some lights going here, right? So obviously, let's see here, let's use this one here. Let's start here. And you know what, let's flip these all off so I don't kill the battery. 
add event, button pressed. Let's talk about lights. And obviously the first one that we're gonna want probably is nav, right? Nav lights. Nav lights are always required. Uh, and let's just do, it could be under navigation or it could be under just nav lights. So let's do, nope, so it's not there. Let's try underscore. There we go. Nav lights on, nav lights off. All right, so this is where things can get a little bit different, right? So if you have a switch like what I'm using now, what we're gonna use for my lights, they are a momentary switch, meaning as soon as I let go of the switch, it goes back to its center position. But it's got two positions, it's got up and it's got down. So I can do a couple of different things. I can do toggle, which means just every time I switch it, which is what we're going to do. Or I could set the up to on and then the down position to off, but then I lose a button. So I prefer to use toggle when it's available for the lights because the lights I don't, you know, it's one of those things like you don't really need to worry about as much in the aspect of burning a button for that, right? So there, there's toggle nav lights. Let's go down here. What's gonna be our next one, right? Probably the anti-collision lights. So let's do this. Send simulation events. And we're just gonna start tapping anti. Chances are they're gonna come up pretty easily. Anti-ice. It also, they may be under beacon. So we'll look at that next. Yes, it looks like they are. So let's go beacon light on. And there we go. So now let's see if we have a beacon light toggle. And there they are. Cool, perfect. So now, let me get this out of your way for a second. Let's clear the yoke. Batteries on, alternators on, avionics switch, which actually I probably avionics wouldn't turn on yet. So actually we can turn that off, but we would definitely want our nav light on and we would want our beacon light on. Boom, and we got to turn them off. There we go. Just think about the order in which you want to do. So I'm going to do two more. Actually, we'll do three more. We're going to do landing lights and we're going to do taxi light, landing light and strobe. Okay, so let's, let's get those mapped real quick. So we're just going to move over to the next two switches. And again, they're, they're both momentary, so we're gonna be looking for the same thing. Add event, button pressed, send simulation event, and we're just gonna search for taxi. And let's see here, toggle taxi lights, perfect. Boom, that's all we need on that one. And then going down to the next position, 47, right? Button pressed, add event, send simulation. This one, we'll see what comes up. Hope oh, landing lights, toggle. There we go. Keeps things super, super simple, guys. There's our taxi lights, there's our landing lights, beacon lights, nav lights. I did that in the reverse order, but you guys know what I meant. And then just, boom, lights off. Last one I obviously need to get is the strobe light. We were definitely going to do that. So let's find that. At event, button pressed. I'll tell you what, I'm gonna use that last position. This is my last of the momentary switches. Let's do strobe and strobe lights toggle. Now there may be some aircraft where these don't work. If you find that particular situation, that's where you have to go in and find the specific aircraft. But for most of it, like I said, I have, as far as I can recall, I have not run into an issue where that's been a problem. And this last one right here, although what is that? That's triggering. Oh, there we go. Last one here, I'm going to use as my parking brake. Again, this one's a real easy one. So this is, again, these are all things that you're gonna use in just about every aircraft you fly, right? <clears throat> and that's just gonna be this one here. Just says parking brakes. Now, oop, wrong switch again. There you go. There's our parking brakes, just by tapping that switch. So let's talk about what we've got here. So, so far we have our We've got our throttles, we've got our mixture, we've got our prop, we've got our lights, we've got our batteries, we've got our avionics, right? All things that we're gonna use in every single aircraft that we fly. Next, we could go with maybe the Magneto, okay? Uh, so let's figure out if there's something that I wanna use the Magneto switch for, because that's obviously another big one. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You know, I have something on my Win Wing Combat panel that I'm gonna use as my Magneto switch. Let's see how this goes. 
Uh, that's the takeoff panel, sorry. There we go. So we're gonna use this set right here. So let's begin. Ah, uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's save some time. I just realized how far that we're gonna get into this, and we're already half an hour in. So, uh, you guys catch the gist. The process would be the same, right? The process is gonna be the same. You look up Magneto. You you find your button, find Magneto, and it's gonna have Magneto one, Magneto left, Magneto right, start. Right, it's gonna have all those positions for you, okay? So what we're looking for here um, is actually what I will do though, is set this one, for example, I'll show you this one. This was our Magneto start. That's gonna be a big one. So let's do that. Add event, button pressed. I'll give you guys that one. All right, so let's see here. Do, 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 do. And we're gonna type Magneto. And you can see Magneto three, four, right? It's got all of them, but there should be, there we go. Magneto off, Magneto two, and Magneto start. For example, we're gonna set that right there. And with just what we've got here, remember the start position is a momentary position, right? So just what we got here, we should be able to start the aircraft. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna set our prop to full. We're gonna crack that throttle. We're gonna set our mixture back, pull it back about quarter of an inch here. Let's go ahead and get the battery turned on, the alternator turned on. Let's talk about our lights. We need our nav light on, the beacon light on. Let everyone know that we're getting ready to start the aircraft. We'll talk about the fuel switch in just a second, but as you guys can see, probably down there at the bottom, it is set to both. So we're actually good on the fuel. Parking brake is set. Lights are on. We should be good for an engine start here. So give us a nice clear prop and let's push. And there we go. And then now if I wanted to, I could set a couple of other switches to Magneto. The cool thing is the button that I set for this, for example, actually looks kind of like a Magneto. Um, it's the select jettison switch on the wind wing takeoff panel. If you guys are interested in Googling that and seeing what it looks like, it actually says jet on it. And it's a rotary as well. It's got uh, five positions, I think. So I can actually set that backwards and use it as such. But the nice thing is you push on it and it's momentary. And that's why I set it to my start switch here. Okay, so... Very awesome. And then we bring our avionics on. And you guys can map the G1000 soft keys. You can map all these rotaries. All of these exist. Everything that you're seeing here exists within SPAD next. Okay. Uh, you know what I didn't test? Let's check our rudder trim. There you go. You can see the rudder trim working just fine. And then when we were ready to taxi, you know, we would just simply, there's the taxi light. And we'd be set for our taxi position now. Check our flaps, right? There's the flaps going down. Blocked by the yoke there. There we go. And that's why we use the flaps increase and decrease. Your lights, your rotaries inside here, they can all be mapped. So now we have a very good start, a very good profile to build on just about every aircraft that we have. So let's go ahead and shut her back down here. I'm going to pull, just pull that choke off here or the mixture, not the choke. Clear our electronics. That's the only thing I have to reset on the controls here. And now we're done. Now I'm gonna show you guys one more thing. So we've created our profile. And since we built this on the Cessna 182, well, we might as well just create it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do copy from profile to show you guys how to duplicate all this information that we just built. New from this profile. And I'm gonna delete that. And we're gonna call this Cessna I mean, let's think about this here. Uh, if you got one seven, well, actually, we can go back to one five, one seven, one eight series, right? Pretty much covers those three aircraft. Uh, name it just oh, the naming rules. Okay, yes, because you can't use slashes; you have to use underscores. My fault. So hit okay, boom, and then now watch. So we've already been in this aircraft. We're gonna go aircraft assignments, and you can look at what's here. This is our registration number that we're currently using as well as the livery that will be recorded as well. So we're gonna add this over just by hitting the uh, arrow here. And now this aircraft is added. Now I can also go through here and add a whole bunch more, but I'm gonna show you guys what SPAD does every time you launch an aircraft. So we're gonna hit save there, okay? And now let's go back to the main menu. Okay, so the behavior I'm about to show you guys will happen whether you switch aircraft or switch liveries. 
So you can even make a profile. I'm not sure why you'd want to, but you could make a profile specific to the livery as well. Uh, if you really wanted to, like I said, I, I can't think of why you would want to do that, but you know. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Microsoft Flight Simulator, even though you guys saw me select a parking spot, started me on the damn runway. Uh, seems to happen the first load on any new aircraft. But let me show you what we're here to see. So here's what SPAD did. It detected that we are in Coronado M2. I hate it when it does that. Oh, it timed out. Let's do this. I'm going to close SPAD, and if I relaunch it, it should ask us again. Because you only got a, a few seconds. I think it's like 20 seconds, then it times out. Okay. Yeah, Elvar, bitch out day. That's fine. So again, here you can see it's timing down 30 seconds. It's basically saying... I've never seen this aircraft before with this particular livery. What profile do you want me to send it to? Now, for example, if we were flying the Cessna 1517 or 18 series, I could just hit assign. And then every single time I switch to this aircraft, this profile would load automatically. But the Mooney has something that these aircraft don't. So we're actually going to create a new profile. So I'm going to hit cancel. We're going to go to profile again. Now I'm going to use this one here. No, it doesn't really matter. New profile from this. And this one we're going to call... The Mooney. Okay. And you can see where the aircraft is. It automatically jumps to the new profile. Now, what this one has that a lot of the aircraft don't is it has a speed brake or a spoiler. Uh, in this case, it's actually a speed brake. But So let's go back to my... Oh, we just lost the engine. That's okay. Let's go back to the throttle. And no, I don't want to use that one. Let's use something that I don't use often here. Mm. Hang on, guys. Bear with me. I'm, I'm just finding a button. Let's use this one here. That'll work. All right. So this is just a thumb button here. We're going to go add event, button pressed. Send simulation event. And I can't remember if it's under spoiler or speed brake. I think it's under speed brake. Must be spoiler. There we go. Spoilers on and off. Okay, so uh, I actually want spoilers toggle for what I'm doing. So I just want a single button to be able to switch them on and off. We're gonna hit OK. Add that. And now that is very custom to the Mooney. And there they are. Okay, and so now I have a profile specifically for the Mooney. Now, if I load the Mooney into a new profile, we're going to get that prompt again or into a new livery, for example. So let's go ahead. I want to show you guys that real quick just so you saw how I add aircraft. All right, so you can see we're still on the Mooney, but let's change liveries. Let's use the green one here. And we'll hit fly. And now you can see once again that you can see that the registration number changed. It put me on the damn runway again. Anyway... Let me hush that. There we go. And I got to move quickly here. So bring this back up. You see, we got 13 seconds left. But it noticed that it did register that the registration number changes because we're in different livery. Now, I do want it to be assigned to the same profile. So I'm going to hit assign. And that's it. And now every single time I fly in the one that I had before or in this livery, it will automatically load the Mooney profile. Okay, now you can do this with your jets. We'll do this. We would do this with the A320. Now, things that you would think about moving forward here uh, for, you know, jets like, for example, you know, the, you know what? Let's go through that. The, the last profile that I'm going to set next is we're going to go, let's load up the longitude uh, because one of the things that obviously comes up a lot is um, toga and auto throttle, right? So let's get those set up. Those are obviously big ones. Okay, so here we are now, loaded back up. We're in the longitude. Now, you can see it's trying to get me started on the Mooney. We don't want that. So we're going to hit cancel. Now we're going to go to profiles. Let's silence that. There we go. Okay. Okay, so let's bring SPAD back up.
And now we're gonna do, we could do a new profile from this. Cause like I'm gonna show you the advantage of using the Mooney, the speed brakes. Okay. Using that same toggle button, I can at least go full and aft. Or if you have an access you wanna map them to, you have that. I don't, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with just using the, the full use. If I ever need to slightly use them, typically I'll just reach down with the mouse and grab them. But so we're gonna do new profile from this. And this one we're gonna make a couple of changes to. And we're gonna call this longitude. Right, so on the longitude, there is a few things that I will do just to make sure we don't have any kind of conflict. We're gonna go to the throttle and where the prop is. Like for example, I think we just shut the engines down. So where the prop is here, I'm actually gonna clear that. Delete event, okay? And then same thing with the mixture. I'm gonna delete that one too. So I could actually use this one for the spoilers if we wanted to on the jets. And actually, what the heck, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we're gonna talk about spoilers. Spoilers have a couple of different options when it comes to the sim. Now you guys saw how we did it on the Mooney, and I can still use that where we can just do the toggle and we get full spoilers and toggle it again and we get no spoilers. But on an aircraft like this, it would be nice to be able to use an axis. Now, as you guys saw before, I got rid of the prop axis and now we just have the throttle. So now we can use our mixture axis, for example, for our um, longitude here. Now, there's two different ways to do this. If you were doing something like the Boeing 737 that has an armed position, we can go to spoilers and then we can set an axis of that point, right? So let's, for example, this is gonna be no spoilers. We hit set. And let's say we wanted to just pull it back just a hair, just like that, notice up here. And we wanted to set it there and then pull it back a little bit more and set over here. This is a range. So anywhere within sight of that range, the spoilers are gonna to move to the arm position. And then if we want full spoilers, we would set it to zero. But now with an aircraft like the Longitude that doesn't actually have an armed position, you get a very odd behavior. So check this out. If we go to the Longitude, now pay attention here. So now we have fully re retracted, right? I'm gonna go to that armed position. And notice that's a little odd, okay? These are not armed, okay? If, for example, if we come up here, you can see speed brakes are in the auto stow position. Right, and that's because of the condition that the aircraft is currently in, right? But if we pull everything back, so watch what happens when we just barely come out of that. So we go to that armed position, let's go to that notch, okay? So that would be technically the auto stow is what's taking over. The, the What the aircraft's doing is it knows the spoiler shouldn't be deployed right now, so it's stowing them. But then if we pull everything back a little bit further, look how far it goes. All we did was come out of that arm position. So it doesn't work in something like the longitude. It makes it really goofy. So with something like the longitude, we don't wanna use this. Like I said, this is great for like the 737 where you can actually pull it back that little ways and it will go into the armed position. Then you have the rest of that axis remaining for the actual uh, throw of the spoiler handle. But we're gonna do something a little different here with this one. I'm gonna delete this. And now we're gonna to go to add event. We're gonna to go to a custom axis. And this is not near as difficult as people may think it is. So we're just gonna to go to browse. And what we're doing in the browse, we're going, what do I wanna look for? We're gonna look for spoiler set right here. Okay, and then we're gonna use axis value. And that's all I'm gonna do is hit okay. Now watch what happens. Now I have full control of the spoiler position in the longitude. And this is one of those reasons why it becomes very crucial to set up different profiles for the different aircraft. That's why we created the base profile and that's why we're slowly modifying them from aircraft to aircraft. But the nice thing about this is you never have to do it again once you get it set, okay? The spoilers was the last big trick that I wanted to show you guys as far as, that, as, far as these aircraft go. The only other two that we're gonna look for is we're gonna look for our toga button and we're gonna look for our auto throttle. Okay, so I'm gonna look for a button that I wanna set. We're gonna use this as my toga, okay? And I'm just gonna do button pressed. Let me get my keyboard back in my lap here. I had stepped away for a minute. And we're gonna do add action again, send simulation event. Now toga can sometimes be spelled a little different, but T-O, oh, nope, let me back up. Let's do underscore. And let's see if it's there, there we go. Auto throttle toga, 
Okay, or we can do auto throttle arm, um, which we're gonna talk about in a second. So, but we want the auto throttle toga. Okay, so we're gonna hit that and hit okay. Now while we're here, we're also gonna arm the auto throttle. So let's find that. I'm gonna use that button there. Add event, button pressed, add action, send simulation event, and we're just gonna find the auto throttle arm. Okay, and then if you guys want, you could also bind the auto throttle disconnect, which I will do as well. So there's auto throttle arm, got that set. And then I'm gonna find one more button for the auto throttle disconnect. And actually I think I'm gonna use this one here. Actually, no, let's go over here. I do like that one. Add event, button pressed, add action, send simulation event, just like we did before, auto throttle disconnect. Now I'm gonna hit okay. And the last one that I'm gonna bind on this one is the autopilot master. Now I could probably go back and actually bind that to all of them. You know, the autopilot master, that's probably a big one. But for this case, I'll show you guys how to do that as well. We'll do this. And if memory serves, it's just under auto, actually I think it's under AP. Yep, autopilot panel. And we are looking for the master. Here's all your different rotaries, heading select, nav hold, autopilot master right there. That's gonna be the last one that I'm gonna bind for this particular segment so you guys can see how all that works. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna show you guys here is how to use something like the Class Echo and one of the great advantages to the Class Echo. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna be taking a look at here is SPAD.next SPAD with third-party applications or hardware. Now, in this case, we're gonna be referencing the Class Echo. Now, you can see we have the Class Echo Mobile, which is exactly what it sounds like, can be found on the Amazon, the Android, and the Apple uh, phone store um, or iPad. I'm using a Amazon Kindle uh, is what I have uh, got this Class Echo mobile running on, as well as this is the actual physical device that can be found on the website. And by the way, guys, a link to the ShakePrint uh, Class Echo device and mobile will be found down in the description below if you guys are interested as well as to SPAD next. So I'm going to show you guys real quick one of the really easy ways to configure your controls, assuming there are profiles out there. And one of those ways is by simply sharing them up to the uh, profile cloud uh, for SPAD next. Now this can be done with something like the Thrustmaster Warthog. Um, verbal controls, unfortunately, that we're using here today don't have many out there yet. Uh, I might upload a couple of my profiles. We'll see how it all goes once I get them really dialed in. But for the class echo that we're going to demonstrate today, I'm going to show you guys how to use the online snippets. So we're just going to hit any button here. And I'm going to come down here to online snippets. And let's hope, nope, it loaded on a different monitor. Hang on one second. It does that to me every time. There we go. And you can see these are all online profiles. Now we can see class echo. We're going to highlight complete device. And you can see the SIM connect and the LVARs, the basically the method that it's using in order to map its software and the designer as well as the aircraft. Now, Shakeprint is the actual designer for the class Echo. So we're gonna use one of his, but for example, we're gonna find the Cessna Citation Longitude. Uh, and there it is right there. And I'm just gonna hit okay. It's gonna ask me if I wanna remap all the devices I'm gonna, or all the buttons on this device. I'm gonna tell it yes. And I'm gonna hit save. And I'm going to do th the same thing with the Class Echo Mobile. Because I can actually have these running on two different screens if I wanted, or on two different locations. It did it again. Put it on the other monitor. Damn it. It's because this one isn't actually my primary display. So we'll set this back over here. And once again, set the longitude. Hit yes. And the cool thing about Class Echo Mobile, just to touch on it for a brief second, especially is or especially with the mobile version, you can have unlimited as long as they're using the same uh, account that you purchased it with. So in my case, I'm using obviously my Overkill Simulations Google account uh, across all of my uh, Android devices. So I could even I could add another one. I could purchase the Class Echo once, which I believe is twenty dollars, and then as long as I'm logged in the same account, I can log that in on my tablet. I can log in on my cell phone, maybe a spare cell phone, and I have a whole bunch of mobile devices. And these things are slick, guys. Like I said, check out the link in the description below if you guys are interested in seeing what it looks like. I've done a bunch of videos on the Class Echo. <clears throat> really, really slick piece of hardware. 
But so now I can control everything using SPAD. So for example, we will use, let's go ahead and mess with the autopilot for a second here. Let's, uh, I don't know, set an altitude target. Watch the altitude target there. You can see it starting to rise. Okay. Uh, if I wanted to, I'm just showing you guys a few things, nothing crazy. Heading. Okay, you can see the heading bug moving around there. Okay, let me actually probably, you guys probably actually appreciate me zooming in on that, huh? There we go. So there's the heading bug rotating. Again, as we were talking about, there's the altitude. Okay, I can set just about anything that I want here. The barometer, you guys can see that rotating now. Okay, so one of the cool aspects of that, and again, this Class Echo mobile device is set specifically for the longitude. So when we go to, for example, the TBM 930, or I will end up going back to the Cessna 152 and the 182 series, many of the GA aircraft, you can get away with a single profile. So like all of these aircraft, I will use under one profile and be able to set the Class Echo up as well. And again, the beautiful part about SPAT is that all of these devices, right, no matter how many you have integrated, and it integrates with a lot, guys, this is just the high level usage of how I use SPAT next. Um, but it integrates with so many different pieces of hardware, so many different pieces of applications. Um, and uh, it's just, it, it's phenomenal with it. And he's constantly updating it. Uh, the developer has just gone crazy with this thing in a good way. I mean, just really turned it into an absolutely robust uh, piece of software that for me, I just, I can't fly without anymore. And it's not limited to Microsoft Flight Simulator. This is available for X-Plane. Uh, it works, actually, you know what? maybe this is a good time. Let's go ahead and transition now to the website so I can show you guys a little bit more about what SPAD can do. All right, so here we are on the SPAD Next website, okay? And so first off, let's talk about some of the things that are already available. You guys can see here's just a few, this is where it all began was with these kind of controls here. Now it's gone far, far beyond that, you guys. You guys can see hardware like this where it gets far more advanced custom hardware. Arduino, if you guys are big into Arduino uh, configurations and builds, uh, works great with that. I mean, it's just an absolutely amazing piece of software. Uh, here's just some of what it can do here, guys. Look at the top left there. We have FSX, P3D, MSFS, X-Plane, Complete Edition is what I use. Um, now, there was a while back he was starting to work with DCS, but apparently DCS just became too much of a pain in the butt, uh, which I can't blame him. I know it's completely different uh, the way it works. Um, a bunch of the panels and the panels that it works with, and this is only a small touch of it. I mean, I have yet to plug in a device that this doesn't work effectively well for. Uh, one of the other things that it does actually have support for, if we go over to buy here, I told you guys that we talk about the price and what was right for you. If you're just looking for basic flight simulation, all you need is this one here, right? The 24.99 euros, okay, and you'll be fine, okay? The, you guys can see everything that it supports here. However, I got the complete edition uh, that supports a bit more, and then obviously uh, the free add-ons and priority support, you know, if I open a ticket, whatever. Um, and it's also got some support for things like American truck simulator. You know, you're able to use it with that. There are certain things that can be exported with it, uh, that make it kind of cool. And, uh, we'll be showing more of that as time goes on, but it's a really, really incredible application And 2499 guys. I'm telling you right now is, is absolutely a flawless worth the money kind of situation. Now, one of the really cool parts here is guys, is you do get also 14 free, uh, days. Now, here's the cool thing about the 14 free day trial. The 14 free day trial, or the free 14 day trial, I should say, uh, is unrestricted. You get the full use of SPAD next. That there's, there's no restrictions, only partial usage kind of thing. You just get to use it, okay? Um, and then after that 14 day period, obviously it expires and you have to decide which direction you want to go. Okay, now I did also want to talk to you guys real quick. I told you guys that we would talk about the Class Echo. Here's the Class Echo and what it looks like. This is the physical piece of hardware that I showed you. Oh, no, it's not. That's the mobile version. I'm sorry, I lied to you. This is what the mobile version would look like on the, uh, uh, like on a tablet or cell phone or something like that. And he actually sells this cradle that comes with sort of a, an analog rotary kind of thing. You know, this is the physical device that I was telling you guys about right here. Uh, and this is, I, I have both. Basically, I have a tablet over here in front of my flight stick, and I have the physical device here just to the left of my cockpit, and I use this one primarily. This section here is a touch screen, obviously, with the encoder. Um, really, really amazing piece of hardware, guys. Absolutely amazing. Um, and the software just as good. And uh, the software 
you know, obviously significantly cheaper. The hardware uh, comes a bit more expensive just because of the hardware that obviously has to be purchased, uh, but definitely worth it. Again, I've done a bunch of videos on this, guys. Feel free to check those out. But that is going to wrap up today's episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator with Spadnex and why I am such a big advocate of it. And I want to remind you guys, this video was in no way sponsored or requested. Uh, I just I have a friend of mine who just recently picked up Spadnex, needed a little bit of tutorial help, uh, and I figured this would be a good opportunity to share it with all of you uh, on how to at least get started with Spadnex. Spadnex also has a really awesome Discord with a fantastic community where the developer himself is very commonly the one responding. So uh, you get that direct support. It's really awesome piece of software, guys. As always, I hope you guys found this video useful. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you did for your notifications of future content. Ring the bell. Stay safe and healthy, folks. I'll see you in the next one.